Hi, I'm Mark Hogan. Welcome to the studio. And uh, today we're doing some uh, headshot photography uh, with our amazing kind of uh, model and client. And she actually used to work for us, our in intern in the summer, many, many moons ago, as it were. Um, but basically, we're doing this film specifically on looking at catch lights within the eye, specifically for professional head headshots. Um, if we're kind of looking into the screen for a minute, really what I want to kind of be showing you is that the first of all, a reflector does make a difference, guaranteed, of some kind, whatever reflector you're going to use, all right? Um, but it depends on what you've got at hand and what you can use. You don't have to go to professional level of actually investment, but obviously if you've got the budget and you're doing a lot of them, then I'd recommend that you're going to be doing it anyway. Uh, what kind of products we're going to be seeing? We're going to be seeing the Triflector, which is basically a multi-arm kind of style. This has changed over the years quite a lot, but it allows me to either use one panel, the two panels, or a third panel, and I can kind of change their angle and shape. I can even swap their sides for a different kind of effect. So we're going to be looking at the effects of that tri-panel as it's such. We're going to be uh, kind of looking at um, probably the most used one that I do in studio, and that would be a tri a tri grip. And this is almost a diffuser as well as a kind of a stripe. So it's kind of not quite a full-on silver reflector because it has a white uh, background with obviously a, sil a silver stripe. Um, on the other other side, you can see that this is pure white, but. It's not pure white because it is technically a diffusion panel, so it allows light to pass through, so it's not going to be fully, fully kind of uh, act as a, uh, a stop of light and things, really. All right, so we're going to look at the different effect of that one anyway. Um, but to be fair, if nothing else, um, a piece of card, a piece of board, something that is a kind of a, um, a cheap piece of plywood or whatever it be, just paint it, paint it white, Make sure it's light, made sure you can store it and things really, but um, decent enough size that if you want to actually curve it, especially if you like the idea of a curved reflector, I would go for a piece of card over anything else and things really. And then obviously you can just get the client to hold it very, very similar to me, unless they're a child. <laughs> then of course you can't do it. But again, uh, many ways to actually do the same thing. If you wanted to build your own out of a piece of card, two stands, uh, each with a weight on each side, use a mount grip on the top of the stand to actually grip on the one end of this piece of the card. Then obviously the same thing on the opposite side, and then as you move the stands together, you move the shape. The only thing you can't do, unless you've got a clamp that has a rotation with it, is start to actually tilt it towards the, su uh, the subject or, to, or tilt it away from them. Um, but as far as the kind of the, uh, the shot is concerned, let's just kind of look, for, first of all, what the photograph is like without any form of reflector in the eye at all. Um, heads up though, if you are gonna be using the likes of a multi-panel reflector and you're shooting in the UK for the likes of Spotlight Magazine, a lot of the casting directors don't like the cat's eye effect that the three panels can give. Remember, we're gonna have a catch light from the key light, then we're gonna basically have other catch lights from below. And what I would do is either retouch those or kind of blur them together so they look like one. Shut up, Mark. Natalia's our uh, dancer uh, kind of uh, model, so we'll kind of just do a quick shot. So let's kind of just step back first and just look at the classic kind of crop in for the headshot image. Um, this is uh, one light first of all, okay? So this is just from the key light itself. I like to add in a separation light. So uh, I'll show you what the separation light's gonna do. Look at the side of the hair and the back of the hair. And as long as it's in the right place, it's gonna add that lovely kind of simple se separation. Uh, if it's not hitting quite what we want it to be, um, basically make sure that you kind of go behind the client and position it to make sure you're maximizing the, bright, uh, the brightness of the light. Once it's in place, we can switch the modeling light off and things really. Um, but if we need that little bit more kind of glamour light, so we just add in or increase the power. Let's uh, just increase that by a third of a stop. And you can see how much now it's increased its bright, uh, brightness. What we want to make sure though, is that it doesn't burn out the top of the, de uh, the detail on the head. That's absolutely key, all right? We want the lovely kind of glamour glow, but basically not to burn out. That, that way is more to do with the tilt of the light. Okay, let's join the lights together. So there you go, turn the head a little bit more. The reason, uh, lower the chin a little bit more please, Natalia. It's perfect, darling, keep it. So 
First things first, um, horizontal the majority of the time. Uh, why? Uh, it's because in the uh, modern kind of web world, most images are actually going to be rectangle as far as their presentation on their portfolio pages and so on. So read and make sure you know exactly what you're supposed to be supplying for an agent or for the likes of some of the magazines and things. But as a rule of thumb, whereas once upon a time we used to shoot rectangle images, more or less today we're shooting a lot of horizontals. So I've turned Natalia's uh, body away from the light. That gives me a natural cleavage shadow guaranteed. We're using uh, the light uh, to light her uh, high and kind of pointing down. I'm using a strip oval box with a small grid in it um, just to control the light so it doesn't spill all over the place. If you really want light to spill, especially when you're using reflector panels, then obviously don't use the egg crate on the front of it because that will allow the light to spread more and things really. But I, but I want to show you the effects of the light under controlled scenario. So the body's turned away to the side. We turn the head back towards the light source, lower the chin, and what I need to make sure is she's looking at me. There you go. She knows what I'm on about because it's a habit to actually look down the barrel of the lens, but I want those eyes to be alive and she needs to look at me to be doing that. So that's what we want to do. Okay, so if we kind of uh, know that this is the basic setup of how I work as far as the look and the feel is concerned, let's um, do a close-up shot of each image um, and we'll zoom in and basically then we'll pull back and we'll kind of do the same shot again, all right? So in other words, what am I doing here? I'm going to zoom in, turn the head a little bit more. Let's uh, zoom into the eyes. Let me just refocus in on the eye. Talia, there's a touch there. Let's keep it. Okay, so we're going to see the catch light within the eye. That's our number one thing, all right? If you're seeing a, uh, another catch light in the eye, it's not a dead pixel on my, cab on my camera. It is flipping video light, all right? And it's adding, he's hidden now just, just behind the monitor, so I don't need to throw things at him. Yeah, okay, so the cheapest of the cheapest. Let's use a bit of card, okay? So this is the first thing and probably where most of you will start. Tally, if you can be a, a stand, <laughs> that's lovely. Okay, let me just uh, zoom back out again. Let's do the shot for the sh image, one second. Turn the head back to me a touch more. There you go, that's loveliest there. Okay, so we got a nice shot. Let's do the zoom in now of the eyes as well. So we can zoom in as close as we can. There we go, I'll get rid of that one. So, but you can see how nice and bright and light that image is no matter what. Then probably many of you, especially when you work on location, you're gonna upgrade a piece of card to the likes of a reflector. I, I purposely like the triflector, and the reason being is that it allows me to basically handhold uh, a, cam a camera and hand hold the reflector at the same time, okay? So let's zoom, zoom back out and just do our shot again. That's lovely, slightly turn with the head just around here, that's lovely. Okay, so this is just the silver white stripe side, okay? Lower the chin a touch more, darling. Lower the chin more. Eyes at me. That's beautiful, and we'll do the zoom in as well. I'm a man, I can't do two things at once. It's true, honestly, I can't. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. So the light in the eye and the catch light of the reflector. That's great. So that's the kind of the try grip as such. And then our next more professional kind of element. And remember, you could actually make one of these yourself out of three pieces of card or whatever it would be, kind of just uh, create, uh, creating some kind of clamp to keep, uh, to keep them together. Let's just bring this in front of Natal uh, Natalia. Okay, zoom, zoom back out first so we can see the shot. Let's keep it, it's there, it's lovely. And now zoom in to get those uh, kind of the close-up of the catch lights in the eye. Relax. Okay, so we've taken four different styles of reflector. Let's look at the close-ups of each of them. So in the first shot, you can see we've kind of kept the same aperture and I'm on them all, it's 2.8. But if we're looking into the catch light of the eye, if we just kind of come in here and we kind of zoom in, we can see pretty much there's kind of no catch light going in in image one. Then the image on the uh, top right is the one with the piece of card. 
the image with the uh, bottom left then is basically the one with the tri-grip reflector. Remember, that was the, sil uh, the silver white. And then the image on the right-hand side is where the actual triflectors. Now, when you're using the triflectors, they'll actually work in a slightly different way. And to maximize them, you need to change the tilts of the actual position of the panels to actually get it. But to be fair, um, if we start to look at the four images again, OK, so let's zoom back out again. Whoops, he says. Let's look at the four images in exactly the same way, but not the close-up anymore. Um, it kind of goes through and kind of which one do you prefer the most? What I prefer is either image one with shadow, image two, which is this lovely kind of white and bright, especially if I'm shooting more of a fine art kind of topless, kind of uh, implied nude, whatever it be. That kind of lovely head and shoulders image is great as far as the white because it kind of diffuses the whole look. But look underneath the chin, how bright it's become compared to the image one, all right? That's the kind of the comparison. Then we go to image three, and image three with the tri, uh, the tri grip is the e easiest one to use without any doubt. And if I was working on location, that's probably the one that I'm going to be using. Why? Because it's not going to blow me away in the wind, and I'm going to be able to have some control in its shape of the light. But you can see how how image uh, four, which is the one with the tri-panels, how it really does actually, I think, stand out from the crowd. But of course, we don't want to really make that investment into that piece of kit unless we're continually using it, you know, on a weekly basis anyway. So uh, remember, as far as the, the catch light in the eye is concerned, if you are shooting commercially, make sure that you basically uh, smooth the triflector three panels into one to uh, not make it look like a cat's eye. Hope you've enjoyed this film. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.